And there you have it. Free agency week two. It is underway very much right in the middle of week two. Uh, the Bills have since made some moves since the last time we spoke. Every time we seem to go live uh, Wednesdays at seven, we seem to get at least something new to discuss. So that makes our shows fun. And we're glad to have everybody here to discuss some of the things we have on the top of our mind. Uh, but, at you know, one of the big news that just broke just a few hours ago, you know, there's been a couple of moves since the last time we all spoke. Actually, Curtis Samuel was signed the next day, but you know we have a Mike Edwards signing, a safety that has been uh, in the fold for a little while. Now the Bills have been very interested in the safety market for much of the last couple of weeks, as we very well know. Um, and they've had a few visits. Were they ever interested in Justin Simmons? We'll never know, but it seems like they've landed in and honed in on a guy that they've played against at least twice last year, and it's Tampa Bay prior to that, and Mike Edwards, a really good-looking free safety. So we have some advanced analytics uh, and more to go over with Mike Edwards and why we think he's a good signing. The first thing's always first. If the other team is sad to lose him, you know it's a good signing, and they were pretty sad. The Chiefs fans I saw were pretty sad to lose Mike Edwards. And Julian Blackman's another guy they had in on a visit. Will the Bills be still continue to be interested in him? The strong safety to Mike Edwards' free safety vibes maybe still on the table. But, Kevin, how are you feeling just first and foremost – about the Mike Edwards signing, is Julian Blackman still around as we await for some of the contract details of Edwards as well? I really like this Mike Edwards signing. Now, if you remember on the show last week, I highlighted Mike Edwards as a sneaky candidate here for the safety position because everyone was talking about Justin Simmons and Julian Blackman. And to your point, Blackman was in on the visit and the bills have been linked to him. But I said Mike Edwards could be a sneaky target here because I just think that Mike Edwards is steady and consistent. A third round draft pick at Tampa Bay in 2019. And he's always been that safety two, safety three kind of player, but he makes plays. He has four touchdowns in his career. And as I mentioned, he's that fringe starter, but he makes the most of his opportunities with the first four years coming in Tampa and then going to Kansas City. And I believe it was Greg last week who talked about him and we pulled his comment up and he said, Maybe we should start taking some Kansas City players and we can start to learn how to beat them. And I, I really like that aspect of it because Mike Edwards knows Steve Spagnola in and out now. I know he was only there for one year, but he's 27 going on 28. He's very smart. He's savvy. And you can pick his brain about how to take down Patrick Mahomes. And the other thing that I'll say real quick is that this does not prohibit the Bills from drafting a safety, but at the same time, it reduces the need. So if you are on the wide receiver train, the chances that the Bills are going to be taking a wide receiver in the first round just increased. A couple of increases there. I would say offense in general probably increased between receiver and ooh, well, where will offensive line land? Well, is that now increasingly going up on the fold interior offensive line specifically? And then knowing Spencer Brown, will they draft somebody that would sit behind their two starting tackles? I certainly hope not. But last year, they, we thought they were pretty set at the interior O-line position and went and drafted a starter at right guard. So they could very much still draft a starting center, move McGovern to where he was a solid left guard last year, and then have still a solid Edwards as the sixth as the sixth offensive lineman and basically blocking tight end and more or less a guy that still gets 10 snaps a game. So there's possibilities here of what the Bills will do in the first round as Mike Edwards open the door up. Could they further double down on it and get a strong safety to pair with Mike Edwards? Mike Edwards plays both, by the way. Um, you know, I, I would say he's truly, from what I've read and seen on film, he's truly more of a free safety is where he excels. But 146 snaps in the box, 102 at slot. So what does that tell you? He's covering tight ends. The Bills are going to have him matched up with certain tight ends in the league. Uh, maybe he knows Travis Kelsey's tendencies uh, and a couple other tight ends as well as anybody. So we'll see if we see him in that kind of box role and 346 snaps at free safety. So uh, he's going to pretty much do a lot of different things, but still skewed free safety uh, kind of fits in the Micah Hyde sense. Only a one year deal. We still don't know the terms of that deal. I'm assuming it's pretty uh, decent looking. And one thing that I really liked that I saw when he was the nearest defender in coverage, and this is a stat that I want to go over because we I was highlighting Julian Blackman and his run-stopping stats, and he is pretty elite at it, and he's pretty elite in the box. Well, I think they're a good pair. But everyone asked me, what about his coverage? Uh, and one thing that I saw from Mike Edwards specifically when he's the nearest defender, 45.8 completion percentage, which is third in the NFL, 25% tight window rate, which is third in the NFL, 58% success rate, which is 14th, a negative 0.15 EPA. That means negative 0.15s expected points against 17th in the league. So he's pretty effective at a, basically the sport is allowing points uh, when you're a defender and he was doing so uh, when he was targeted. 
6.9 yards per catch as a safety is pretty good and 28% hawk rate, which is how good he is able to get to the ball and make a play on it 20th in the NFL. So top 20 in pretty much every single advanced passing category stat that you would want to imagine, uh, you know, they do use these. Uh, it's not, there's really not a great way to break down safety play based on tackles or what have you. So that's why some of these, these stats uh, are a little bit more than just your box score uh, snaps, uh, snaps in the NFL. So does any of those jump out to you, Kevin? I mean, he's pretty good, uh, pretty good pass defender. Yeah. Like I said, Mike Edwards is just that sneaky defender who is always in the right place at the right time. Aside from that James Cook will route that he ran against him in Kansas city. And one thing that I do want to say real quick before I show you the stats that I had, remember this? Mike Edwards was one in coverage on Latavius Murray when Josh Allen pulled off that miraculous play in Kansas City. And he also had that one in the first quarter, or maybe it was end of the first quarter, beginning of the second, where he triple pumped on Dalton Kincaid, and then he sidearmed it to him, and he completed the pass, and Mike Edwards was in on the coverage, and he was just like, are you kidding me? How does this guy do it? Well, Mike, yeah. that guy is your quarterback now. So <laughs> we are glad to have you. Yeah, some of the bigger plays that he allowed uh, against the Bills were two plays that shouldn't have happened, honestly. Uh, yeah. So so there you have it. I mean, he's been a pretty good defender um, just all around. I mean, just being seventh out of 66 in reception percentage uh, with over 50% of snaps, obviously, is super good. You know, that's something that I – Really point on an EPA, something you hear us talk about on this show pretty extensively over the, at least as, as long as, you know, we're over a hundred episodes now, everybody. So over the last hundred episodes, so we appreciate everybody tuning into all of those smash that like button for us here. Um, so it's been a while. And one of my favorite stats is obviously EPA uh, fourth out of 91 safeties um, total EPA negative 5.7. So he's, he allowed a touchdown less than his average defender. So I mean, it, it's what it is at this stage in free agency. We're assuming it's a good value. Like no one's going to sit here and say it's one year, 24 million. Um, <laughs> or, I mean, I would be shocked if it's more than four, wouldn't you? Like what's, what's your guess on, what do you think he got paid? What would you pay him? I'm still thinking within the four to six range. So I would okay. be shocked if it's more than seven. How about that? So, I mean, if okay. it's like a one year, $5 million deal. Okay. Uh, but you're right. I, I think it's probably in that four to $5 million range, maybe it stretches a little bit, but the new contract details came out for Curtis Samuels deal that he signed. And we'll, we'll be getting to that later on in the show and correct me if I'm wrong, but his cap hit for 2024 is only 3.4 million. Correct. Yep. Had to add a void here in there to get into that. So we can kind of, kind of get into some of the, the salary cap and where the bills are at at the moment. And we'll get into some for agents targets that we have remaining toward the end of the show. And, you know, it's almost draft time. So we're going to have to start talking about some draft as soon as next week. So, uh, we'll do that and more toward the end of the show and kind of what we're thinking. But I thought another uh, impressive statistic, just a straight up box score stat, second in the league with t defensive touchdowns over the last since 2021 with four. Um, so that's proof that he makes plays on the ball. And it's just what you're looking for from a free safety. It reminds me a lot of the Michael uh, Micah Hyde signing. Uh, Micah, we gave a few more years to. So if Mike Edwards has a good year, uh, we're in a little bit of trouble trying to retain him uh, because he'll go to free agency. And I think was part of the appeal to choose the best team that he could possible. Um, and the reason that Chiefs let him go, why would the Chiefs let him go? The Chiefs have a couple of nice looking safeties on their roster to where they just they just couldn't roster him. Uh, you know, they have Justin Reed, Brian Cook, and uh, up-and-coming uh, Shamari Connor, who we saw actually in the playoff game when actually Edwards went out um, early on in that game. And once he went out, I thought the Bills had a pretty successful game plan uh, for the majority of that offensively uh, till the very end. Obviously, we know how that, that game wound up. But it is very safety-friendly is one of the things that he mentioned. So, like, there's probably no reservations that he's going to be good in this defense, right, Kat? With, with his comments right off the bat that he mentions – how good the safe system is for safety play. Yeah. I mean, I have the utmost confidence between Edwards and Sean Dermott for being able to coach him up. And you mentioned Micah Hyde and let me pull this up because I tweeted this earlier and I was just doing some advanced stats. And this is really interesting because as much as we love Micah Hyde, and like I said in the tweet, as much as I hate losing him, I don't think there's going to be that big of a drop off here. Look at these stats. So Micah Hyde played 14 games, started all 14 last year. And he allowed 26 completions on 37 targets, good enough for a 70.3 completion percentage and a 100.7 passer rating allowed when targeted. And then you look at Mike Edwards. Now, granted, he only had five starts. And you can see with the completions and the targets here, 
as Edwards was targeted 31 times, so just six less than Micah Hyde. And look at those numbers, 48.4 completion percentage and only a 77.2 passer rating allowed when targeted. So again, like as much as it stings to lose Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer for that matter, the Bills are getting younger and honestly, I think better because you could tell that Hyde and Poyer were both losing a step. I think what's also kind of interesting, well, A, you, you projected like seven. I would be a little shocked. So PFF had him as a top 150 free agent, uh, which is always good. It was a pretty deep free agency class, 14th ranked safety available. And there's some good big name safeties this year too. And as well, they projected one year, 3.5 million. So that's about where I'm at on this deal. One year, 3.5 million. Will the Bills go with a void year in there because there's potential that they re-sign him? Uh, you can utilize those void years as we've seen them do, actually. The Bills have utilized some void years recently with some extensions. Uh, Dawkins' extension, you could utilize some of the void years he had. So there's a lot of things that you can do with a void year. And it, will we see that? Will, will, will remains to be seen. But I do think the Bills will probably try pretty hard, Kevin. You know why? You got to keep them about under four because otherwise you start losing comp picks. So I doubt the Bills threw away. We talked about it last week. I doubt the Bills threw away potentially a fifth round pick uh, by giving them just a little bit too much. I'm going to imagine they kept that in mind. And in order to do so, you have to be roughly around. It's No one knows the exact science, but roughly around four and a quarter, four and a half, which is probably where he met. So I'm thinking between three and four and a half is where he's going to end up on a pretty much a prove it deal on a safety friendly system. I think that's kind of where he'll he'll lie, in my opinion. So that's that's first and foremost uh, where I think his number is going to be. Well, we'll see. I'm, I'm thinking one year, four point two five million. So we'll see how close I am uh, with that projection. What, what will his cap hit be though? Could be even be lower if the Bills did tack on a on a on a void year. So total career snaps. You know, I kind of gave you last year, but he's only played at the line of scrimmage two percent of the time, seventy four snaps. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much like right about to rush, usually in pass rush situations. He's played in the box uh, 720 times, so that's 22%. Uh, 55% at free safety, 1,700 snaps. So I would pretty much tell you he's played double, over double the snaps at free safety. He's a, he's a free safety in my opinion. But he's got that sneaky 565 snaps from the slot. So he can definitely do some things uh, from the slot position. But uh, from safety being in the top two needs – um, I do think that there is some play now to where it's not necessarily an urgent need to make it a top two pick. I think that with an addition of Julian Blackman, or if they do more at the safety position, I think you can almost take it off the board or at least until the late rounds. 